Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jeff, the IT guy. Guess what? Today we're going to be looking at thermal paste once again. The last video, we looked at how it performed with air coolers. Today, we're going to look at how it performs with water coolers. That's right. If you've ever wondered how you can get lower temperatures with your AIO, say it's a Corsair or NZXT or Cooler Master, and you're stuck with the, the basic thermal paste that comes on it, listen, this video is for you. This way you can find out which thermal paste performs the best to get you the lowest temperatures. All right, and so today on the chopping block or in the Hunger Games of thunder or thermal paste, we've got six contestants that are gonna put their hat into the ring, as they say. We've got Thermal Grizzly Cryo Knot, we've got Noctua NTH1, we've got Arctic Silver 5, Arctic Silver MX4, we've got Corsair TM30 and Corsair XTM50. We're covering all our ranges from cheap to expensive, and we're gonna see how they perform when they're met with a Ryzen 3 1200 at 1.425 volts at 3.8 gigahertz. So we're running a lot of volts through it. If you've watched the other video for air cores up here, you'll see that <clears throat> you know the temperatures were, you know, they're a little bit high. It's a lot of volts, even though it is just a basic quad core. Uh, it's what I had on hand, so that's what we're going to look at. Let's go and look at the uh, setup over here, but before we do, this video is sponsored by me, Jeff the IT Guy. That's right, so do me a favor, hit subscribe so you can watch all sorts of other cool videos and help me tell my wife that this isn't just a waste of time and that people actually do like me, unlike her family. All right, so let's go ahead and look at it. Oh, before we go, stay tuned to the end of this video. We've got a really cool announcement and I think you're gonna really enjoy it. So let's check out the system. Oh, here's the system. Oh wait, you all weren't supposed to see this. I'm not biased or a shill or anything. That doesn't say I love Noctua, not in the slightest. But here's the system. Let's talk about it. So it's got, like I said, the Ryzen 3 1200, 3.8 gigahertz, 1.425 volts. It's on a Gigabyte B450 board. We are running a Noctua, or not Noctua, but an NZXT X53 280 mil cooler with two Noctua Redux fans. Those are running at full blast 1700 uh, RPMs. So this is the system. And for the testing, we will be running OCCT, uh, the large data set AVX2 instructions for 15 minutes per thermal paste. So it's 15 minutes per thermal paste, uh, running OCCT, and at the end of 15 minutes, we get the max temperature, and so we'll compare temperatures and price. All right, so we ran all the tests, we've done all six of the thermal paste, and now we're gonna talk about which one performed the best. Um, these results might not seem very shocking to you, but at least, I mean, they're cool to know. They're cool to know, right? And we'll talk about each thermal paste. So <clears throat> the Arctic Silver 5 was the first up, and our temperature for it was 55.5 after 15 minutes of OCCT. Um, Arctic Silver 5 is the low, the most liquid-like um, all of the thermal paste. Uh, you know, it's also the cheapest. And so the Arctic Silver 5 is $1.57 uh, per gram. And so that brings it in at the cheapest. It performed almost the worst but it wasn't the worst. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit more liquid than it is uh, thermal paste. It does a good job, I guess. Um, been using it for years, and so had a really good spread. It, it came off very easily, and you know, like I said, it, it did okay. Second up was the Arctic MX4. The MX4 is what Arctic recommends for water cooling. Um, this is their, I guess, water cooling thermal paste. Uh, and it was the second air test and it was 52.13 degrees Celsius. Uh, so 52.13 and it came in at our second highest as far as price goes. And it's $3.25 per gram. Uh, it had a great spread. It was very easy to clean off as well after the test. Um, no problems whatsoever out of it. And it, it did, did well 
as far as thermals, you can see there's a three degree difference between it and the Arctic Silver 5. Next up was the Corsair um, thermal paste, and the first one was the TM30, and it had a temperature of 55.63. Um, making it the worst. No, it wasn't the worst. Second worst. So the TM30 uh, came in 55.63, so it's higher than the Arctic Silver 5. It does have a higher cost than the Arctic Silver 5 at $2.66 per gram. Um, <clears throat> it was a little bit harder to get off than the other two as far as after the 15 minutes. Um, I've used this before. It does seem to cure uh, quicker, so it does get harder faster than the other thermal paste. Next was the XTM50, uh, which was our worst performing, believe it or not. I was very shocked about that because it did very well in the air cooler test, but it was the worst performing with 56.38 degrees was the max temperature on it, uh, making it the worst. It's also the second or third highest as far as price goes at three dollars per gram so at three dollars per gram it's fifteen dollars for a, a tube of five grams uh, you know and, and it performed the worst i was very shocked about that i expected it to be about number two um, but it wasn't so it also seemed to cure over that time uh, it was harder to get off next is the noctua nth1 which was the star of the show in the other video that we did, the air cooler, and it had 52 degrees even, making it our second best. And so it was the second best in the um, air cooling, it's the second best in the water cooling, and I promise you I'm not a shield. I did not make these uh, numbers up to make not to a win in the first and second one. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them, but if they wanna sponsor me, hit me up. Um, but I'm not sponsored by anybody. And so it performed the second best at 52 degrees and the price of it is $2.28, making it the second least expensive. And so it's about 60 cents higher per gram than the Arctic Silver 5. However, it performed second. And so this goes to show that Noctua is just not for air coolers and they're not just and Noctua is not just known for their fans. Uh, their thermal paste is top notch. So, lastly was the Thermal Grizzly, which is the most expensive at $3.33 per gram. And it did the best as far as thermals and it was 50.13. So 50.13 degrees, uh, making it our best as far as performance goes, it's also the most expensive and it spreads a little bit thicker. It's a thicker paste that this is the crown on it. And so it done really well. Uh, wasn't shocked by it whatsoever. It won the air cooling test. Now it's won the water cooling test. So what can you do? It's like $19 for a tube of five and a half grams. So $3.33 per gram and you pretty much get your money's worth, it seems, uh, with it. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of like getting an on on You know, it's gonna rocket and it's expensive, but you know, you can get a 3800X or whatever, 3800X for a little bit, and it's like the Noctua. It's second best, but it's gonna rock some faces. So, before you go, let's talk about the testing procedure. So, 15 minutes, then cleaned it off with the Noctua um, wipes every time. So I cleaned it off with the Noctua wipe. Then I dried it with uh, a cloth, or a, not a cloth, but a paper towel. Um, so I cleaned it, dried it, put the same amount of thermal paste in the same spot each time, tightened it to the same exact, exact tightness on the cooler, um, the fan speeds never changed. They were at 100% the whole time. The pump speed was 100% the whole time. Everything was set to where it could be the same exact test 
every single time. The voltage was static, boom. The um, <clears throat> frequency on the processor, same, everything locked in to make this all the same so that we could really see which one performed the best. Uh, the case was always had the door on it. None of the other fans inside the case were running. So everything was set to where it was the same, no matter what. Now, for the special announcement, or the announcement, I guess you can call it special, CPUs are known to degrade over time with a large amount of voltage. And so we are going to test how long it takes for a CPU to degrade. And we're gonna do this in hours. And so be subscribed, stay tuned for that coming up. We are going to run a processor as hard as we can, stress testing it for as long as we can to see how long it takes before uh, the CPU degrades. And we're gonna, we're gonna answer that question. We're, it might take two, three months, but we're going to just run it completely under a stress test for as many hours as we can a day. To speed that process up. Um, it's not going to be something that's indicative of you know normal use if you're playing games for a couple hours a day or whatever. You know it's completely synthetic but it's pushing the processor at 100% at maximum voltage, maximum frequency for a long period of time and see how long it takes for it to degrade in hours. If you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead so you can stay tuned for that. Listen we've got more reviews coming for like a MacBook Pro. We're looking at Raspberry Pis. Um, if you're interested in an IT career, go ahead and look at some of my career advice videos. There's a playlist. It, it talks about everything about how to take a job interview, how to succeed, uh, certs versus degrees. There's all sorts of stuff that you can learn from this channel. Go ahead, tell all your buddies. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video uh, informational, and I hope you can decide which thermal paste is best for you. Knock to it.